Welcome, everybody. Welcome to uh, 10 Great Biscuit Destinations to Wine for, organized by the International Wine Tourism Conference, IYNTC. Delighted to uh, welcome some of you back. Uh, I can see on the, the attendance list uh, that the, some of you have been with us through all, all of the sessions uh, over the last uh, five weeks. Well, we're delighted today to revisit two of our um, destinations. Uh, we've we've held the International Wine Tourism Conference out. We, had, we were in Champagne uh, last uh, in 2015, and we were in Umbria in 2012. That's following um, on from this webinar. So delighted to welcome uh, to to one one person for sure you recognise. That's Elizabeth Vidal on 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 screen in the middle as I see her. <laughs> Hi, Elizabeth. Hello. Hi. Nice to be here with you. Thank you for coming. And we're also delighted to have uh, Benjamin Fumon, who um, represents uh, one, uh, a champagne wine producer in uh, Shannon. I believe you're in and around Shannon. Thank you. And thank you, Anthony. Welcome, everybody. It's always a pleasure to to take a, a while with you and to show you our treasure in Champagne. And uh, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Anthony, to organize uh, this nice event. OK, so as always, on, on the right, you have the chat facility where you can say hello from wherever you are in the world. So we've got uh, Sirius there in Porto, Portugal. Um, we've got uh, Marino there from uh, Athens. Hello from Oxfordshire, Jean Bruno. Canada, I believe, saying hello to Elizabeth, and hello from Chicago there, from Carol. So do say hello and say where you're from. It's also interesting to see uh, where everybody is uh, tuning in from around, in and around the world. Uh, but most importantly, it's a place where you can uh, post a question uh, for, for either Elizabeth or Benjamin uh, during the presentation, and we'll get to the questions um, at the end, okay? So, as always, we're going to start with our poll question. Uh, this time we've got um, uh, two prizes, because we've got two speakers. So, double prize, if you, and maybe a third prize, if we talked to Angelon uh, at the end. <laughs> uh, for those of you who get the right answer. So, we're going to start the poll, and here it is. Uh, and the question today is, when were the first vineyards planted in the Champagne region? Was it uh, between the 5th and the 1st century BC? between the 1st and the 5th century AD, during the 9th century AD, or during the 17th century AD. So all vote now. 30 seconds, I'll give you 25 seconds. <laughs> could, could be any of those. I myself haven't got a clue. All I know is Armenia and Georgia as so kind of ancient dates so it's fairly evenly split mostly going for during the ninth century at the moment okay five more seconds and we'll close the poll the answer of course is in the presentation so uh, watch out for that and of course we've got two special prizes maybe a third one uh, at the end of the uh, presentation okay let's end that there and uh, over to Elizabeth, who's going to um, tell us that there's more to Champagne than Champagne. Thank you, Anthony. Can you see my screen? It's okay? Yes, yes. Okay. So we are right now in Champagne area. Hi, everybody. Uh, so I'm here today to be your guide for some unforgettable moments in Champagne. Why is Champagne area? Well, I know that everybody knows it, but just in case, uh, we are at only 120 kilometers away from Paris. So the three main cities in the area are Reims, Epernay, and Chalon and Champagne. Uh, and how to get to these cities? Very easy. Uh, so in Paris, uh, Roissy Charles de Gaulle, we have a, a 30 minutes uh, train by TGV. You can reach the, the area. And as, as well, of course, by uh, car from Paris or Lee or Charles de Gaulle with one hour and a half by train. So as I 
told you uh, from uh, Paris Roissy, but not only, also uh, from uh, city center of Paris um, at only 45 minutes and obviously by car. So our first stop today will be Reims. Reims, Reims in French. Reims is the city of coronations and this is our beautiful cathedral Notre Dame uh, where kings of France were crowned here. So this is a very important cathedral in uh, the world France uh, and is included in the world UNESCO heritage. So next to the cathedral, there is the Tau Palace. Uh, it was the palace where kings of France uh, stay when they uh, came to France to be crowned. And another important monument uh, in the city of France is San, Basil uh, San Rémy Basilica uh, with uh, this superb Romanesque art as well included in the World Heritage. And which is not uh, new for this year is Regalia. Uh, which was a, it is a, a sound and light free show uh, in the cathedral and uh, right now will be in San Remy as well. So another important aspect of the city of France is obviously the champagne cellars. Here you have an example with Branca Pomery. I like this one because uh, you have uh, two double visit. Uh, Madame Franken loves uh, contemporary art, so you have uh, always an exhibi a different exhibition in the cellars. Then Villa de Moselle, which belongs as well to the Branken Pomery family, and um, Branken family, and is a gem of Art Deco. Art Deco is very important in Reims, so uh, nowadays Villa de Moselle is a museum. You can uh, do as well cocktails or dinners or lunches inside. Another good example is Bev Clicquot, uh, champagne cellars as well located in frames. Uh, these are the typical criers and uh, these cellars are uh, included in the UNESCO World Heritage since uh, 2015. Reims is as well l'art de vivre, à la française, so uh, is the um, most lively city in the area. Here to the right side you have the city centre and to the left side you have Galerie Lafayette. And now it's time to, uh, uh, to go to bed, so uh, le let me show you just some examples of our beautiful hotels. So you have the Grand Hotel Continental, it's a boutique hotel in the city center of Reims, completely re refurbished. And uh, a new hotel that we have uh, since uh, one year and a half ago, La Caser Chanzy by Marriott Autograph Collection. It's in front of the cathedral. So imagine uh, taking a glass of champagne uh, in this room and uh, looking at the light show uh, regalia. Hotel de, de la Paix is another uh, good example. It's the biggest hotel that you have in Reims. And then uh, obviously we have Relais Chateau. Le Crier in Reims with uh, Philippe Mill is the chef, uh, two star Michelin restaurant, and La Sette Champenoise uh, next to Reims uh, with uh, three uh, star Michelin restaurant as well. And we have other uh, uh, accommodations like uh, uh, bed and breakfast. These bed and breakfast uh, are quite close to Reims at only 20 minutes, uh, belonging to the family Roger Goulon. And Hotel Chateau de Sassy in the small village of Sassy uh, at uh, only 20 minutes again uh, from Reims. Gastronomy. So as I told you, gastronomy is very important for us. We have nine Michelin restaurants, restaurants in the area, but not only. We have as well good value for money restaurants in the whole area of Champagne. And so uh, you can uh, uh, do practice with uh, chocolate workshops, cooking classes. And uh, we have a common sign posting in the World Champagne area with uh, 400 kilometers with a uh, route touristic de la Champagne. So we can go through the vineyards and the most beautiful uh, villages in the area if you follow the sign posting. And now go to next stop, the Regional Natural Park Montagne de Reims. Uh, uh, that hosts the Bersenet Lighthouse Museum. And as well, uh, Le Feu de Verzi, a uh, very special, uh, with these very special trees. And let's then continue 
to Epernay. Epernay is the capital of Champagne and uh, it's in the middle of the vineyards. It's the city that you can see at the end of the photograph with the Champagne's Avenue, uh, which is as well listed in the UNESCO World Heritage. And uh, you can uh, find uh, the ch famous uh, Champagne sellers like Mercier and Moet de Chandon. Then another activity, uh, uh, very uh, funny, it's the hot air balloon. So uh, you can go up with this balloon, uh, 150 meters up to the, um, to the sky, take a glass of champagne, uh, uh, having uh, some nice time and uh, with the magnificent views of uh, vineyards and the city of Epernet. And then at the same avenue of champagne in Epernet, you can stay at home uh, with, the, with the wine growers. For, this is an, uh, a good example, Champagne Michel Gonet. Uh, sufficient no, signal, the, the owner has five uh, luxury bed and breakfast. And for a small group, you can uh, take dinner or lunch with uh, her and her family. And which is coming new for this year is the Museum of Champagne and Archaeology in, uh, in uh, the Avenue of Champagne. And uh, an important uh, point in, uh, uh, in uh, Epernay is the Avid Lumière. So this is a, a show in the mid-December. You can combine uh, this, uh, this show uh, with the Christmas markets, for example. So imagine the Avenue Champagne with all the Champagne houses open with a lot of concerts, this video mapping in the city hall, and a, a very beautiful period to come to the area. And then uh, Apron is the point of departure for several activities. Here you have some samples of activities. So Planet Explorer with electric, uh, electric scooter, my vintage tour uh, with uh, Maeva, uh, who will be your vintage guide. Uh, or to the left side, you can see James, he's a wine grower and he uh, created the first eco uh, visit in the vineyards in France. And then other activities like foot golf. We have the first foot golf in France and the only one, for instance, and uh, other activities like tasting workshops, the Bateau Champagne Valley, or picnics at the wine growers. Obviously, uh, harvest is very important for us. So you can uh, come for a great picking day or with the other, uh, some uh, of, um, of uh, the sellers, you can create your personal champagne as well. And Obile. Obile is a must uh, to do in uh, the area. This is the birthplace of champagne. Uh, why? Because Dom Perignon uh, lived in the uh, Obile Abbey. And so he improved uh, the method of champagne. And he, Obile is one of the most beautiful village and charming villages in the area. And we have uh, a new interpret. We will have a new interpretation center, Presoria, in AI, at only ten minutes away from uh, Epernay, uh, coming this summer. And time to go to bed. So, in one of the our best hotels in the area, Royal Champagne, at ten minutes as well uh, from Epernay. It's a five-star hotel uh, included in the leading hotels of the world. It was the best hotel of France in 2019 by Comme de Nas Traveler. And it has one Michelin restaurant in the hotel. And coming as well soon in 2021, uh, Moutigny Hotel Resort will be a four-star hotel in the middle of the, of the trees in Moutigny, not so far away from Royal Champagne. And then let's go to our next and last stop, Chalouin Champagne. Chalot and Champagne is a city of art and history, as you can see here with the uh, uh, Chateau Place Marché. And a different way to visit the city uh, could be uh, Metamorphose. Uh, with, uh, it's a boat trip uh, in the canals of, uh, of this beautiful city. And uh, all the emblematic um, buildings uh, illuminated. And it's a light and sound show. So you have uh, um, an example of the 
of this uh, show, Notre Dame and Vaux Collegiate, which is included in the in the UNESCO World Heritage as well in Shalom. So as you can see, uh, we have uh, some monuments included in, in UNESCO. Uh, history, architecture is very important for our area. So this is the city center of uh, Shalom and Champagne with a beautiful garden, uh, jar, and the cathedral at the end of the photograph. And bon voyage. So my team and I here and Thank you very much for your attendance. Thank you very much. Okay. And now uh, you will continue uh, the visit with uh, Benjamin uh, Fourmont. He is the sixth generation of uh, Champagne Joseph Perrier sellers. And he will be your guide for uh, next uh, minutes uh, in the cellars. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, I, I will try to be a good guide in Champagne. I am very impressed by your, your, uh, uh, the timekeeping you have because uh, we have uh, 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 10 to 15 minutes each to talk about our activities. And I discover many things in Champagne, even if I was born in Champagne. My grandmother was in Champagne, my grandfather too. So it's, it's always interesting to hear how, how many activities do we have in Champagne. I just want to make one precision in your presentation, Elizabeth, because the first one was, uh, yes, uh, Epernay is the capital of Champagne. Reims is the capital of the Champagne. Be careful because there is a, a small, a small uh, difference between the two. And Chalon Champagne, where I am today, is a heart of the champagne. So we each city has something to say. Uh, so I'm very happy to say that. I don't know if you already saw my slides start. No, now. Okay. Um, so uh, I will stop to, to, to say some, some silly, silly things. I'm very happy to be here today, especially in this, in this crazy time for tourism around the world. I don't know if I, I have authorized the authorization to, to say that, but, uh, it is hard for us. It is hard for, for, for you. It is hard for us also. And, and especially at Joseph Perrier because, uh, uh, we just finished our two years renovation at Joseph Perrier House of Champagne in Chalon Champagne. So who am I? Uh, my name is Benjamin Fourmont. Uh, it's always hard to, to talk about, uh, uh, me, but uh, I will try to do it. Uh, my name is Benjamin Fourmont. I am the sixth generation to work in this absolutely nice, beautiful champagne producer named Joseph Perrier. Uh, it was uh, created in 1825 by Joseph Perrier himself. So close to 200 years ago. Um, me, uh, I joined the company in 24 after a degree in uh, in finance, after working in finance industry. And uh, I joined the company because during the 90th anniversary of my grandmother, uh, she told me, Benjamin, I know you like to drink Joseph Perrier, but it could be interesting if you know uh, how to grow grapes and how to do champagne, even if I grow in, in the vineyards and in the cellar. Uh, it was not my specialty. So uh, I come back to school during night session to, to have my degree. And, uh, in, uh, in 2013, uh, I finalized my degree and, uh, to have the brevet professionnel of, uh, viticulture. And, uh, it was insane to stay and live in Paris. And so I came back to, to, to Chalon and to Reims and to Champagne. And, uh, I begin as a, as a salesman to push the door to say, my, my, my champagne is the best. You need to, to, to buy it. And I realized it was a bit more complicated than that, but, uh, it was a very good experience. And, uh, end of, uh, 2018, my father was retiring and I, I, I take the leading and I now the general manager of the company, uh, since two years. Uh, I can assure you <laughs> 2020 was not the best year to do some business. I don't know why people don't have so many things to celebrate this year. Uh, but, uh, I, we have plenty of hope for 2021 and I'm sure you also, and it is the best things and the best way of thinking we have to, to, to focus. So a small story about Joseph Perrier. Uh, Joseph Perrier was, uh, so I already told, uh, told you that, but founded in 1825 by Joseph Perrier himself here, just here. Um, he was a mayor of Chalon Champagne. And you have to imagine in this time, 1850, 1830, 1850, um, Champagne countryside uh, and Champagne 
vine represent 85,000 hectares of vineyards. Since to now, it's only 35,000. Um, so Chalon Champagne was a very huge place for Champagne because it, it was a prefecture of the Champagne countryside. Uh, it was headquarters. So all the bottle which was um, uh, um, export around the world have to go through Chalon. So Chalon was very important place. Nowadays, we are unique because we are unique in Chalon. We are the last house in Chalon because around Chalon Champagne, there is no vineyard. The first vineyard is at Ambonnet. It's not so far because it's 15 kilometers from here. But just next to me, we don't have vineyards. We only have very, very, very nice cellar, uh, very uncommon because it was uh, on the ground floor. I will come back on it in, uh, in, uh, in the presentation. So, founded in 1825 by Joseph Perrier and his father, François Alexandre, uh, and my great-great-grandfather bought the company to his cousin Joseph and Émile Armand Perrier in uh, 1888. Um, in 1889, we are very proud to supply the Royal Court of England, Queen Victoria and King Edward VII. That's why our cuvée, our brut non-vintage, named Cuvée Royale. Uh, Queen Victoria gave us a right to use this term since uh, uh, since 18, uh, 1892 exactly. So since this time, our cuvée named Cuvée Royale for Cuvée Royale Brut, Cuvée Royale Rosé, etc. So it's a long story and a um, very long family story and I'm very happy to, to continue to to trans transmit my, my passion on it. In the vineyards, we have some vineyards because we have two places for Joseph Perry, one in Chalon, the main, the headquarter for us, with our cellar, our cuvery, uh, all the production lines, etc. Everything is here. Uh, and we have another place for vineyards uh, in, in Cumier. We have a very nice house in Cumier with uh, two hectares of park and 23 hectares of vineyards around uh, the Mount Valley. So, uh, Ovile, Cumier, uh, etc. I will show you uh, in a small video at the end to show you exactly how nice is it, how, how nice is the Champagne countryside and how nice uh, is our domain. Our vineyards is 35, uh, high, high environment, environmental value and sustainable viticulture certification in Champagne. For sure, it's uh, very important for us and uh, it is uh, the way to, to, to continue. We also produce some organic champagne, but uh, I will not. Uh, we don't have time to to share a glass, and I will be ha very happy if you are if you have to be in champagne today. But it is not possible yet. I hope I can uh, I can uh, I can welcome you soon with uh, to share a glass of champagne. So our cellar, uh, it's a s small photography. It's very uncommon because we have Roman galleries, Gallo Roman galleries. Uh, on the ground floor. I don't know why when the Roman came, uh, came in Chalon Champagne uh, 2000 years ago, they don't go on the top of the hill to take the chalk, to do the road, to do the house. They, do, they go directly to the chalk. So it's very impressive cellar with nice chalk pit uh, uh, ducked into the hill. It's very, very, uh, very interesting. We have at the top of the hill um, an arboretum to regulate our hygrometry to to stabilize uh, our our quantity of humidity inside. You know there is something very important to have a nice cellar. You need three things. The first thing is to have um, uh, same temperature all the all the year, uh, um, very good ventilation and um, uh, nice hygrometry, humidity inside. The variability have to be very low. Uh, so we had that thanks to our arboretum, thanks to uh, in, in the hill, in the, in the, in the, in the choke. So, uh, 20, the, 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 the high of the hill is 20, 20 meters high. So we are inside. So we're, it's very, very interesting and very nice. Uh, we just finished two years renovation and I opened my tourist to my, my tour and, uh, uh, the 16th of September. So perfect timing to welcome people and tourists in Champagne. Uh, it was huge, huge reno work and a huge renovation. Um, because as you, you don't know yet, but Joseph Perrier is a small house of Champagne. We are close to artisan house. We are not small grower, but we are not, you know, like industry with big, big group. We are, we are close to 200 years old. So we, 
are the in, inside the grand mark of champagne. We are not a small grower in the grand mark of champagne. Joseph Perrier have, have to be uh, uh, have to be everywhere, but just to know where we are. So. Uh, we moved 500,000 bottles in, in, in our cellar to, to, to renovate it. And now it's nice pictures you can see. Um, we create a shop, a testing room. We have a small museum and, uh, and a nice picture of vineyards. And we explain all the process to do champagne. Uh, so it's very interesting. And I hope you will come soon to visit it, you and uh, your, the people you know and you want to, 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 to ah, we are moving now. Sorry, I'm, I'm talking a lot, but you know, patient, is, it, it takes a lot of time. I will try to show you a small virtual tour. So I need to share my screen. Okay, selection infinite with a nice French. Uh, up, okay, authorized. Normally, you have to show you. So it was um, an experience because normally to to see uh, you know to to to, uh, to see the, the the sorry this video you need to have a mask with a, it's a free three hundred sixty uh, video so you can see the weather is like that all the time in Champagne it's very especially in winter and summer every time no I, I'm kidding but uh, it was uh, it was. I hope it will be like that every day. So we are here in the vineyards, uh, in the in the in the in the way between Ovile and Cumier. So in the middle of uh, in the center of Champagne vineyards. Uh, I will show you. So we you have here one of the part of our vineyards just at the top. I, I don't you don't see at the top where you see the 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 forest. It is Ovile. So I will show you. I will. Uh, I will uh, continue on on the video uh, in forty nine. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's a direct problem. Normally, you will. It takes not too much time to to see all the all the video. But uh, okay. So we were just close to the Marne River here at the beginning of the video. Now we are in the parcel named La Cotabra. It's a first cru village. It's a first cru parcel. And Cumier is on the right side here. You have this nice spot where you can share a glass and champagne for, uh, of Joseph Perrier just here during the summer. Uh, and uh, this, this small house was a very funny project launched by, uh, by, uh, the Architecture um, uh, University of uh, of Metz. It's a city close to close to Chalon, on Champagne, and they decided to um, reput the old small house uh, in the vineyards named Les Loges de Vigne. This small house at the uh, one uh, fifty to sixty years ago was used to store. Um, all the tools needed to to care the the vineyards, but they decided to re-implant all this uh, small house, but with uh, recycling recycling all the woods you, we have in in the in the cellar, etc., etc. So we participate to that, and they do this uh, this uh, student do that, and uh, it was very nice place to share a glass of champagne in a very nice plot, first group plot named La Cotabra. Uh, very nice blonde and noir. Uh, I think it, it will be a good time to, to, to share a glass of champagne because one thing is very important. I, I forgot to say it to you is there is no time to drink champagne. Uh, you can drink champagne all day long. Uh, champagne is not alcohol. Uh, I can say that because nobody is coming from France because if I am in France, I can't say that because alcohol, uh, champagne is alcohol, but around the world, champagne is champagne. So uh, <laughs> it's important to say. I just, voila, la, here is a very nice view. We were close to the Mount, Mount River at the beginning. Uh, we move up to a small, small house. You see, uh, uh, you don't see my, uh, I don't know if you see my, uh, my, my mouse just here. And you have Cumier just here, Ovile next to me. Just next to the next next to the forest, you have the small village of Ovile. The Joseph Perrier cellar is over there, and Epernay 
in front of in front of me just here. Um, here is, is the heart of the old champagne um, vine vineyards. We are in, in in the middle because you have the Marne River here, you have the Montagne de Reims just here, and just next to Epernay you have La Côte des Blancs. It's the three main uh, um, uh, place for vineyards, uh, and uh, and it is absolutely marvelous. Uh, mer marvelous. Uh, it is the best grapes is coming from here. Best grapes is coming from this place, and it is the heart, uh, the, the really heart of the of the of the Champagne cellar. We will continue with a small tour inside uh, inside our uh, our cellar. Here we are in the Onotech. Paul Pitois is taking care of our old uh, wine, Neck Down. Uh, and here we have Vincent next to us, who will drive us uh, our our um, uh, our truck uh, and to to see how is uh, how is our cellar. So. Okay, the video is going slow, slowly, so I will just stop a little bit here. So uh, we have some. I will show you here the the, the nice cellar on the ground floor waiting for char charging the video. So that is a chalk pit. This chalk pit here was was used. Uh, this this part of the cellar was was built in 1850 1840 1850 uh, by Joseph Perrier um, because uh, because when we when we, when he, we arrived at Chalon Champagne 69 Avenue de Paris we have only three galleries uh, around one kilometers of of cellar uh, in the in the place and. When we developed our uh, business, uh, he decided to to create new galleries and to create chalk pit, uh, chalk pit going to the to the to the top of the of the hill to have some ventilation coming inside the cellar. Because if you have not good ventilation, there is some moisture coming, so it it is absolutely awful to for keeping uh, champagne aging on the leaves. Our champagne, Joseph Perrier, minimum aging forty eight months, four years. In our cellar before putting in the market, so it's very important and it's uh, for qualities to have good uh, uh, good ventilation. So the cellar is we will continue in the cellar. Uh, it is quite quite interesting to to visit like like that. It is one of the oldest uh, gallery. Uh, very 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 interesting because it was uh, created by the Roman. So very very high, higher than the other one, uh, you can see, with uh, some bottle on the lat, uh, aging in this position during 48 months. But, oh, sorry. Here you can see uh, our top cuvée named La Cuvée Joséphine. Joséphine was a daughter of Joseph Perrier, and when she decided to marry, Joseph Perrier created a specific you know, uh, designed for for her wedding, and my father, uh, when he decided to launch a special cuvee in uh, in 1982, he make a copy of his design. But as you can see, all the label is already on the bottle. Why? Because to fix this design, because it's a serigraphy, we have to put the bottle in the oven up to 300 degrees. So it's uh, uh, all the the labeling process have to be done before uh, bottling process. Uh, it is very nice. We say here, the bottle of champagne, the bottle of champagne is en masse, neck down. Just it's the last position before disgorgement process. Here you have some uh, nice pupitre. Uh, it is a riddling rack uh, done by hand. Uh, three kilometers of galleries like that. So uh, it is very incredible time to to. There is, when you are visiting my, my cellar, it's, there is no time and uh, it is uh, very, very nice. I hope you will, uh, you will enjoy it. Uh, I would like to say thank you for my presentation. I don't have time to present my wine, but it will be very great to, to share a glass together next time. Um, and uh, I think, and I hope I've already finished next. 
I would like to say thank you for your attention. And I'm sure you will have plenty of questions uh, about Joseph and about Champagne. Thank you very much. And I like to say I prefer to have some interaction, but uh, uh, Anthony told me, no, it's impossible. There is too many people to have some questions. <laughs> Thanks, that's so <laughs> it's, it's to you now. Thanks. Okay. Well, we've got uh, some questions coming in, so um, we'll, we'll get to those in a minute. So here, I do have a question. Please uh, post it now. Um, but while people are thinking of a question, I have one for Elizabeth. Uh, that I saw in your presentation was a, a lighthouse museum, you said. Yes. How come there's a lighthouse in the middle of a vineyard if, there's, if you're far from the sea? It's, or are you not far from the sea? We have a sea of vineyards. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, it was uh, like a secret. But uh, at the time, it was a Champagne Coast who, uh, um, who uh, made advertisements in the in the lighthouse so it uh, it was used uh, for uh, advertise the champagne house but it doesn't exist anymore that champagne house so um i see right. and right now it's a museum it's a champagne museum okay but that's a good answer there. It's a lighthouse in the sea of champagne <laughs> like that one okay trisha uh from the USA is uh, just asking you if we um, can send a list of the latest hotels to be opened or about to be opened in in the area. And the answer is <coughs> yes. I can send you Tisha. Yeah, I know Tisha, so I can send her uh, 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 a list of the hotels, of the new hotels, I guess, or because I know she already yeah. campaign. New, new hotels, I think the yeah. last, uh, since I went DC. Which one? <laughs> because I know Tersha in 2015, I think. 2015, yeah, it was uh, the last one. We have so many new, no, I, I mean, new hotels that I, I um, give the names uh, uh, on the presentation. Obviously, I can uh, I can list uh, and, uh, and uh, send to her. And um, I, I, I think I did a mistake. Uh, L'Hotel Moutigny, it will be opening in 2010. <laughs> So not this year, next year. Right. So if you, uh, I see a lot of you, uh, most of you watching at the moment are uh, are agents uh, in in wine tourism. So um, Elizabeth's compiled a, an agent handbook uh, for you to take away. So you're welcome uh, to take that, um, irrespective of winning or not the um, the poll question. Which uh, instantly, what was the answer? Uh, Elizabeth, to the poll question. Oh, the answer uh, was uh, B from the first to the fifth century. Uh, uh, from the first to the the uh, fifth century. So it was the first vineyards were planted were planted in Champagne at this time. Okay, so it's quite quite a long time ago. I didn't. Um... Yeah. It was I think a, a lot of people yes. got to guess sooner than that. It was a tricky question, yes. <laughs> okay, so um, Anna is asking a question for um, Benjamin. Uh, what, what's the main soil type in the, in the vineyards? Chalk, chalk. Chalk is, is everywhere in Champagne. Sometimes you have some. Um, uh, some argillo, calcare, but the, the main, the main soil, subsoil is 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 a chalk, chalk, um, Côte des Blancs, Vallée de la Marne, uh, Montagne de Vins, it depends after the exposure of the of the of the of, the, of your vineyards, but Cumière, uh, Ovillet, South South uh, South exposure, so it's, it's quite nice for for maturity. Yeah, and you said that uh, that. Your winery is basically in a, a chalk quarry. Is that correct? Mm. Yeah. And what they, they used the, what the quarry was for quarried the chalk for what? For building roads or building <coughs> no, we don't chalk for schools? <laughs> no, we don't use chalk. No, no. Now I just want to add something about the present, not the presentation of Elizabeth, but about Dom Perignon and who is the founder of the Champagne. There is different people very important for to who create the Champagne. 
Because Anthony is a, is, a, is a UK man, I have to say the first people who create a sparkling wine is, U, is English people. My heart is blooding, but uh, that's the reality. The second thing is um, Dom Perignon find the, the right glasses to resist of the pressure inside a bottle of champagne. It was a, a kind of glasses, glass, the glass used to create the bottle to resist to the pressure. And there is a third people very important for that is the pharmacien François, who creates the right equation, equation during the second fermentation, how, which quantity we will put in, the, uh, which quantity of sugar and yeast we will put in the bottle of champagne to have the right pressure and the right, uh, the right bubble. So these three people, UK, UK people, the English people, uh, Dom Perignon and the Pharmacien François. We can also um, say um, uh, Pasteur who work on the foaming, the foam and the bubble of champagne. So that's my, my just my small precision of uh, <laughs> champagne lover. It's true, it's true. <laughs> yes, and, and in fact, it was in the Cotswolds that uh, this first sparkling wine was made. So also chalk, chalk scenery there. Yeah. So, okay, so Susan, wonderful presentation, love to go there. Uh, I organize trips, Christos, to Champagne for groups from the UK and we all stay at the De La, pa De La Paille, which is great. Do you know De La Paille? De La Paille? No? P-A-I-S. Oui, De La Paille, L'Hôtel de La Paille. Ah, Hôtel De La Paille, yes, yes. Well, yeah. <laughs> In Reims, there is, for me, hein, as a, I'm not consumer, but the Hotel de la Paix, the Continental, the yeah. uh, yeah, Caserchangy, which is very, which is new, is very nice. Uh, in Chalon, uh, in Chalon, there is a Hotel d'Angleterre also, which is very nice. Uh, and uh, where I put my customers when they come, it's La Paix, the Continental, the uh, uh, and uh, also very nice in, in Champillon. Uh, Royal Champagne is absolutely incredible hotel, but more close to a palace than a classic hotel. Yes, and Sanjeev is also echoing the, the fact that that was a, it's a nice hotel to stay in. Mm -hmm. um, Caroline is asking for the uh, the list of the ho new hotels as well. Caroline, not sure. Oh, yes, that's Caroline, as in Caroline and Jay, I believe. Cruise, yeah, Caroline cruise, and Jay. Cruise ship. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Christos is asking, do you think that there is a growing trend to drier styles of champagne, like extra brut or even brut nature? Uh, I think uh, it's also because of climate change. I think our, our taste is changing a little bit. We, we are liking more and more uh, drier champagne, but I think the, if it is not the right angle. The, the right angle is, we need to put less sugar during the, to finalize our champagne because we have a more maturity inside the grapes uh, during harvest. And uh, this combination, uh, this combination, people don't like to sweetie, sweetie wine nowadays. For example, we produce demi sec champagne, which is more than 45 grams of sugar inside, inside the bottle. Uh, so uh, this champagne is not so popular nowadays. Only maybe some big house put some with nice white sleeve to put uh, uh, this kind of champagne, sweetie champagne with ice cube, etc. to to the face. But the reality we need, if we, if we, if you work well and you pick up the grape at the right time, you need less sugar, the champagne to finalize it, thanks to climate change. Okay, good. Apologies for the um, Barcelona Express going by there, if you heard it. <laughs> okay, Sanjeev saying there's a lot more to do in the, the Rio than, than just drink champagne. Mm -hmm. Exactly right, yes. As I said at the beginning, there's more to champagne than champagne. <laughs> yes, exactly. It should be, should be the tourist board slogan. <laughs> yes. Okay, I don't, would you have any more questions? Uh, if not, let's just go to... Um, cause, because... Um, uh, ben Shaman has also kindly um, donated his um, presentation, so uh, I think I'm sharing that. Uh, and uh, it, it's good to download that because then you get in the in the presentation, you've got the, the link to the the video where you can watch it with music uh, and without Ben Shaman talking 
<laughs> over it so you it's, can relax and, and play with it yourself and do the 360. Talk, yeah. <laughs> okay so those t those are being uh, shared now and uh we were talking um off air in fact bonjour had just gone off air he's still with us he can still hear us mm -hmm. um the, any of the uh, agents uh, the media and the audience or indeed uh, any of any of you watching um uh, are most welcome to to come and visit the um, the champagne producer uh, with the aim of uh, bringing um, customers clients to to um, to the region so if if you um planning a trip to to champagne to discover the champagne region then do do look up joseph uh sorry joseph <laughs> sorry, bon uh, the joseph pedier uh champagne champagne producer and uh they'll be i mean he'll be delighted to um personally show you around the um around the um the winery and those impressive uh galleries of chalk is that the right bon Chimon? I didn't hear you, so it's it's a bit. Uh, my connection is not good. Hello. Yeah. So uh, so yes, he's saying yes that you know, everybody's welcome uh, to go and visit uh, uh, whenever whenever possible. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Is there? A, a, Carol's asking. Is there a resource for great tour guides? Are we? Uh... I, I have uh, some contacts for tour guides, for guides, isn't it? For yes. Guides. Yeah, yeah, I have, uh, Carol uh, can contact me. I, I, I think I have this con the contact, but um, I put at the end of my, uh, I can share maybe my contact again, Anthony. Yeah, if you just go put it on the chat, your email and chat. Right. And, and, yeah, uh, I think that's not my email. And uh, I'm, of course, a woman at disposal to give more information. <laughs> okay. So oh, the, there yeah. we go. Yeah, yeah. And. That's it. I, I see we've uh, we've got all the questions in, and uh, we've uh, we're running out of time anyway, so that's good. So it's been great to revisit Champagne to discover uh, new things that uh, have new activities that have been created. Foot golf actually took my um, took my eye. I would wouldn't mind to go at that myself. <laughs> uh, so thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. And Bonjour for showing us around. Thank you very much. A sample of a producer in in the area. It's very interesting. I am one of many producers, but uh, I, I try to, to talk about my my nice house. And thank you very much to listen to me. Thank you, Anthony, to organize that, and thank you also, Elizabeth, to invite me. And uh, please come come in Champagne. We are waiting you. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Everybody. <laughs> okay, so next up we've got. Um, Going to Umbria, revisiting Umbria. We we did the International Wine Tourism Conference there in 2012, and we're delighted to welcome uh, Chiara Lungarotti, who will be taking us uh, around the destination uh, of Umbria, Italy. So, if you haven't registered and you want to watch, then I've put the direct link to the live room at the top of the um, chat there. So just click on there and you'll get straight into the room um, and we'll see you there. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.